Yes, uh, good afternoon to all second and third years. So today's class, first we focus on uh, the syllabus and what are the leftover topics and then we move on to the next unit, right? So let us have a look at our syllabus. So unit one, if you see any student can uh, please inform me any topic we have missed out. Okay. So first let us have a look at the second unit. So second unit is completely regarding the converters and even I have sent the material to the mail ID, the group mail ID. You can go through the converters, but more than the material, the entire online class explanation, what we have discussed, it will be in an easy manner. Examination also, you are going to get the complete marks, the same. Right? Now, if you see the second unit, uh, single phase fully controlled converter, Yes, for three different types of loads, resist to load, induct to load, induct to load with the back EMF, which is the motor practically. So what we have studied, fully controlled converter, if the firing angle is less than 90, it converts the power from source to load. If the firing angle is greater than 90, maintained, so power direction is changed and power flows from load to the source. So where we use this application, so whenever you want to start one electric train, so electric train to start the electric train, no need to apply the external power. If the motor is operated, if the power electronic circuit is operated with the firing angle greater than 90, the motor will act as generator and it generates the power by itself. So these type of vehicles we require, self-propelled vehicles and self-generating vehicles. So fully controlled converter, we have taken the problems also, right? Next, single phase off controlled. Off controlled converter, another name is semi-converter. Okay, with the RL and RLE load. So semi-converter and full converter, only one or different. Semi-converter provides more output voltage than a fully controlled converter and good power factor than fully controlled converter. But fully controlled converter can control the speed of the motor in two quadrants or in both directions forward and backward okay and semi converter cannot make the motor to act as generator only the fully controlled converter the same concept we go for the three phase so as we have seen in one particular concept 150 kilowatts if the power requirement is very much high so we usually go for the three phase supply there we require the three phase full converter Okay, the same similar explanation. So what is the equation three root three Vm by pi cos alpha. If you are going for the three phase, three root three Vm by pi cos alpha. We have done the problem also as they have given for the RLE load, right? So what effect of load and source inductance? So generally when we have derived the expressions for fully controlled converter and semi-converter in all the test books as well as for the syllabus, we have assumed that the source is ideal. Every source has got its own internal resistance and the source means synchronous generator here for the supply. 
so the windings have been neglected for these derivations if the windings have been included so what is the effect so what we have discussed one particular slide we have taken if the source inductance is present there will be a chance of overlapping of all the four scrs okay so the uh, overlapping concept we have taken it is a simple concept so today's class we will take on this gating circuit this is the new topic in the syllabus okay and dual converters we have taken three phase dual converter circuit i will send through the mail that's okay right so now let us come to the first unit the concept of power electronics as i mentioned power electronics is a branch of science with digital control and conversion of electric power at desired position with the help of power semiconductor switching devices so applications all the first classes we have taken to power diode right so concentrate for the scr power mosfet and then power igpt ujt we have taken commutation class a class b class c we have taken the circuits so today's class we concentrate on gate drive circuit for bjt and mosfet okay then we finish this first two units if any student can easily uh, put in the chat box any topic we are missing out okay general idea of gating circuits and gate drive circuits resembles the same only okay so gating circuits ujt circuit will be similar right so now we just move on to the today's topic which is gate drive circuits very next class we start the choppers okay right so let me share the new slide here so first the two concept is gate drive circuit so what exactly the uh, definition here we'll see let me share already i have shared this one yeah now it is okay so gate drive circuit where we use so first uh, what is the driver circuit what is the name driver here in the power electronics a driver is a power amplifier you can see here power amplifier circuit which will increase the strength of the current from low value to the i value that means if you see let me show the practical circuit so scr or mosfet they got the gate terminal source drain gate for the mosfet scr anode cathode gate so for the gate we are supposed to apply enough power to turn on the scr or to turn on the mosfet so let us have a look at the mosfet because in the syllabus they have mentioned gate drive circuit for the mosfet everybody know the mosfet operation we have studied but we focus here on one these are the characteristics so what you are supposed to put in the examination is the very first this diagram and next we will modify this diagram okay so what is the gate drive circuit if you see the mosfet has got source drain and gate okay so source terminal is used to create the movement of electrons drain terminal is used to accept the flow of electrons electrons always move from source to drain and electrons flow is controlled by the gate and gate terminal should be turned on how to turn on the gate terminal you can say sir we can apply the positive energy certain energy to the gate okay but in practice in practice if the power supply is not connected directly to the gate if any electronic circuit is connected then we require driver circuits driver circuits will amplify the low current signal and we we'll amplify the low current signal and convert it into high current signal and then apply it to the gate terminal when we say low current and high current it is used for the current amplification when we say the power amplification driver circuits will amplify the low power input to the output high power and then apply it to the gate terminal because gate terminal has to turn on this device so now if you see this circuit okay so being an electrical engineer we must explain how the current flows so when the supply is on first the current will never flow through this resistor rc entire current flows through this particular copper wire 
and then it flows through the base uh, gate terminal of the MOSFET. So uh, in this way, the current starts to flow. This is one type of gate driving circuit. Okay. Now let us see the next one. So what circuit you have to explain? We'll see. So first for the BJT, I'm just taking. Let us uh, check this one. Right. So what is a basic gate drive circuit for BJT means you can mention optocoupler. So optocoupler circuit contains an LED and then followed by the BJT transistor. So what exactly the operation? So first when the driver circuit is connected to the LED, this, are, this should act as the driver. So what is the driver circuit simple? Driver is a power electronic circuit which will amplify the low power signal to high power signal or low current to high current or low voltage to high voltage. Now if you see the transistor, now to this transistor base terminal, we should apply the high power signal in order to activate this particular transistor. So how it is possible? So the driver circuit, how it will operate when the supply when the current flows through the LED, a light of suitable intensity is created. It will be ejected onto the base terminal of the transistor. In this way, the transistor is going to turn on. This is as simple as that, the optocoupler. Right. So what we have mentioned. So driver circuit practically contains the supply is given to the LED. It generates the light impulse signals. And this light impulse signals are applied on the base terminal of the transistor and then transistor is turned on. So when the transistor is on, it is ready to amplify the weak signal to strong signal. Entire application of the transistor will be performed. You can see uh, the simple optocoupler circuit, yes. Now you see examination, you can draw, you must draw this particular circuit. So what is the first gate drive circuit for BJT or MOSFET? If you see here we are having the MOSFET and here we are having the BJT. So explain the gate drive circuit for MOSFET, BJT. You should explain this circuit. This, uh, this is nothing but the resistor. And we are having the supplier 5 volts and minus 5. Okay. Right. So output is what? One bulb. Okay. One bulb is nothing but the output. So how does this circuit will operate? Okay, now you see. When the supply 12 volts, so case one, when the supply 12 volts is turned on, current flows through the output load, but this MOSFET is turned off. Therefore, uh, no current will, uh, MOSFET is turned off, it is open, no current will flow through this output as well as the MOSFET. And when the supply is 12 volts is on, current can also flow through this terminal, but transistor is not turned off because transistor or gate or transistor or MOSFET, when they will be turned on, when a small current flows through their input terminals. Remember this point, I want to turn on the transistor. How to do? So directly connecting the voltage battery to uh, transistor emitter and the collector terminal, no base terminal should current should flow through the base terminal so how to explain this circuit okay so i'm coming in the straightforward explanation so why we are placing these resistors what is this gate drive circuit in simple language gate drive circuit is used to amplify the low power signal to the high power signal or low current signal to the high current signal why we require gate drive gate drive circuit if you are having in all the electronic circuits, in all the electronic circuits, we use the microcontroller. After the microcontroller, we are having the power electronic circuits. So as the power, as a microcontroller receives very less current, it operates with very less current, but the power electronic circuits will require high current, high voltage. So what we have to do, we must place one driver circuit between the electronic circuit, electronic part as well as the power electronics part okay so driver circuits now this one comes clearly driver circuits will receive the low power signal from microcontroller 
and outputs high power signal to the power electronic circuit. I hope now it is clear as per our subject. So gate drive circuits, they convert low power signal to high power signal where they are used. Gate drive circuits are placed between microcontroller and the power electronic circuits. Gate drive circuits will receive the low power from microcontroller, will amplify and then apply that low power, uh, high power signal to the power electronic circuit. So this is the gate drive circuit. So imagine here if I am mentioning 5 volts, that 5 volts is the output of the microcontroller. Okay. Now, how does this operate? If I turn on directly 12 volts, MOSFET is not turned on and even BJT is not turned on because uh, in order to turn on the BJT or MOSFET, first for BJT, current should enter which terminal anyone? Base terminal. And for MOSFET, current should enter the gate terminal. Therefore, so first, how do we operate this circuit? Case one, when the supply five volts, here the five volts is present. In practice, five volts means it is the microcontroller will be present in the circuit. Right? When the supply five volts is turned on, current flows through the LED. As a result, LED is on and a light of suitable intensity is ejected and then applied at the base terminal of the transistor. I hope everybody can write this one. When the supply is turned on, current flows through the LED, LED is on and a light of suitable intensity is applied on the base terminal of the transistor. So when the current flows through the, yes. Now this optocoupler specialty is nothing but the transistor in present in this optocoupler will be Converting the input light signal into electric signal. So when the LED turns on a suitable light, a light of suitable intensity is applied at the base terminal of the transistor. And hence the transistor is turned on. Once the transistor is on, large amount of current flows from collector to emitter and electrons move from emitter to collector. Now the transistor is on. So first our aim is to turn on the transistor here. So when the supply is on, current flows through the LED, LED is on, a light of suitable intensity is applied at the base terminal of the transistor. As a result, the transistor is on. When the transistor is on, now we apply, now case two, now 12 volt supply is turned on. When the 12 volt supply is turned on or activated, large amount of current flows through the transistor only. It will never flow through the output because MOSFET is off. So when transistor is on, it is acting under saturation region. It is completely just like a copper wire with negligible resistance. So we say that the maximum current flows through the transistor. Transistor is on. Then the current. Yes. Then the current flows through the gate terminal of the SCR. Gate terminal of the MOSFET. So what is this uh, resistor? These resistors are current limiting resistors, biasing resistors. If this resistor is not placed, large amount of current can flow through this particular gate terminal of the MOSFET. MOSFET might be under breakdown condition. So we should design the circuit in such a way that proper resistor is placed and required amount of current is flowing through the MOSFET gate terminal. So these three resistors, will provide the biasing. Biasing means the uh, biasing resistors. Biasing is a process of application of pure DC current to turn on one electronic device. So pure DC current we are going to obtain here once the transistor is on, but that DC current in a controlled manner is applied to the gate terminal of the MOSFET. Right. So now the MOSFET is on. When the MOSFET is on, What's going to happen? MOSFET is connected to the output. So electrons move from source to drain. As a result, current flows from collector to emitter. And now the output is on. So in the industries, you are having the bulb or if you are having the motor, how to explain this circuit? I repeat this one, uh, this particular circuit, which is very important. The direct circuit you can show in the examination. So gate drive circuits of MOSFET and transistor contain optocoupler. Optocoupler is the combination of LED and the transistor. Okay. Uh, 
Now, when the supply 5 volts is turned on, current flows to the LED. LED is on. When the LED is on, a light of suitable intensity is applied on the base terminal of the transistor. As a result, small amount of current flows through the transistor base terminal and then transistor is on. When the transistor is on, large, uh, when transistor is on, with 12 volt supply also on, entire 100% of current from the 12 volt supply flows through the transistor. But this current has to be controlled and required amount of current has to be applied to the gate terminal of the MOSFET. Therefore, we place the biasing resistors. These biasing resistors or current limiting resistors, they transfer the current towards the gate terminal of the MOSFET. And now the MOSFET is turned on. When the MOSFET is turned on, electrons move from source to drain. The upper one is drain and here it is source. Source to drain. As a result, current flows to the MOSFET and output is always connected in series with the collected ter drain terminal of the MOSFET. And now the motor, if the output is load or the load is motor, motor starts to turn on. So in this way, we are going to turn on the power electronic components with the gate drive circuits. That's why these are nothing but the gate drive. The, we are, this is the gate drive circuit. This is the MOSFET. For the MOSFET gate terminal, we are applying certain energy with the help of this driver circuits. Okay. I hope it is clear. All the students, in a simple language, you can put how to turn on the MOSFET here. So with the help of the optocoupler. Right. So when the MOSFET is turned on, the load is on. The last, uh, we'll take this one. It's a last topic only for this unit. Right. When the supply 5 volts is turned on, current flows through the LED. Again, we should pass the safe current. Therefore, we place the resistor here. Right. When the supply is turned on, current flows through the LED. LED is on. When LED is on, a light of suitable intensity is applied on the base terminal of the transistor. As a result, the transistor is on. When the transistor is on, current from the 12 volts flows through the transistor. And then that current has to be limited proportionally as per the requirement of the gate terminal and then the current flows through the resistors and then to the gate terminal of the MOSFET as a result now the MOSFET is turned on when the MOSFET is turned on electrons move from source to drain and current flows from drain drain to source through the load now the load is on if the motor is present it starts to rotate so how to control the speed of the motor by controlling the gate terminal Yes or no? By controlling the gate voltage. Right. So for uh, this is the gate drive circuit. So we will show one real time. Simple two supplies we have taken. Here also you can see two supplies. Two batteries we are going to take. Right. You can see the blinking of the LED. The load we have taken here the LED. The entire operation. So gate drive circuit means you can explain this particular circuit. For transferring the MOSFET. So now I'm just uh, putting one question to all of you. One simple circuit. I'll see how many of you can explain. Come on, this circuit. Who will be telling this one? Right. All of you, come on. So let us say, I want to turn on this transistor. This type of circuits will be asked in the complete examination. Okay, as we are having the uh, gate drive circuit. So tell me anyone, first, how to explain this circuit? Any circuit is given, you must be in a position to give the explanation. Right. So assume here they have given zero volts and VCC here. Okay. Right. Assume all of you, this is positive terminal, this is negative terminal. Of course, in the animation, it is shown zero. But imagine this is the positive plus VCC. Here it should be minus VCC, even if it is zero minus VCC. Okay, this is plus and this is minus. Come on, let us start. What is a circuit explanation? When the supply is on, when the plus VCC is turned on, current flows through which resistor? All of you, RL or R2? 100% of current flows through the R2 resistor. You can show the current direction also. When the supply is on, 100% of current flows through the R2 resistor since 
transistor will be on when small current flows through which terminal base terminal if you are sending 1000 amperes directly to the collector transistor will never turn on transistor what is the main property behavior of transistor means when a small current flows through the base terminal of the transistor then the transistor is on then electrons move from emitter to collector and then large current flows from collector to emitter so here we say when the supply is on hundred entire current or maximum current flows through the resistor r2 resistor r2 is not present then maximum current might uh, break down this particular transistor so these are called current limiting or the uh, voltage dividing resistors so current flows through the resistor r1 and then now you can see it is connected to the uh, one more resistor current limiting resistor to pass the safe current to r1 and then rb now you can ask sir why r this uh, r1 is placed okay current flows to r2 see in practice here also there will be connection the circuit the circuit contains the connection so when two resistors are connected in parallel okay they share the common voltage so i want this let us say here it is 10 volts 10 volts should apply here also so these two resistors are in parallel so this 10 volts will be applied at this terminal that's why we have taken one more resistor if this resistor is not present the voltage applied at this point will start to decrease and low voltage might be applied to the base terminal of the transistor so this is called voltage divider circuit okay gate drive circuit uh, in that classification so how to turn on how to send the energy to this particular base terminal now so when the supply is on current flows through the resistor r2 current flows through the resistor rb then so what is the use of r1 if r2 and r1 both are connected here r1 r2 forms a parallel uh, resistor connection therefore the input voltage is applied at this junction so maximum voltage is applied at this junction because of this parallel connection and then that voltage is responsible to drive this particular transistor okay that's why we place this particular resistor that's why this voltage is dividing here okay voltage is applied at this point therefore this is also called as a voltage divider circuit right so when the supply is on current flows through the resistor r2 and then to the resistor rp safe current we have to pass okay that's why we are placing the current limiting resistor and then the current flows through the base terminal of the transistor so the property of transistor is to turn on whenever a small current flows through the input terminals of the transistor now the transistor is on when the transistor is on electrons they move from emitter to collector and the current flows from collector to emitter because always the direction of the current is taken the opposite direction of the movement of electrons current flows from collector to emitter if any load is connected always load must be connected in series with the collector the load connected in series with the collector turns off okay this is the explanation we have to give a simple theory i hope all the students uh, have understood this one so I repeat for the last time when the supply is on 100 percent of current maximum current flows through the resistor r2 and from r2 to rb rb to base terminal now at this uh, base terminal when small current and flows through the input terminals or base terminal of the transistor the transistor is turned on when the transistor is turned on electrons they move from emitter to collector as a result current flows from collector to emitter during this process if the load is connected in series with the collector always any load must be connected in series with the collector only so the load is turned on as a result if the load is resistor load the bulb is on if the load is inductive load the motor starts to rotate so gate drive circuits explains how we are going to turn on the power electronic circuits okay so gate drive is a gate drive circuits are gate drive circuits provide will amplify the low power signal to high power signal in order to turn on the power electronic circuits so as we have taken low power input from controller low power input from the controller ic and produces high current drive input for the gate of the high power transistor 
okay either on a chip or as a discrete model different model so remember for today's class uh, these are the topics let me share screenshot the attendance first any questions are there anybody you can ask you can unmute and uh, from first two units okay you can unmute or put it in the chat box I'm taking the screenshot now of the attendance today's class only one topic it is a simple basic topic only Fifteen students are there in the chat box, right? Okay. If the questions are not there, I'm ending the class. And next class, we start with the choppers. Okay. All right. Let us see the syllabus. Any topic is missed out, you can ask. Right. The choppers we will take. Most of the people are from Polytechnic. You must be knowing the basic, but still we take in the how the current flows, different directions, then inverters, and then AC regulators that finishes the syllabus. Okay. Let me 